when we think about history's most influential scientists, names such as Einstein, Darwin, Newton, or Galileo immediately come to mind. However, people rarely talk about how these European geniuses are indebted to their successors from the Arab world. These ancient scientists made glorious advances in science and technology when Europe was suffering from cultural decline engulfed in the Dark Ages. Arab scientists ensured that a great portion of classic Greek scientific and philosophical texts were preserved, and many of their translations found their way to medieval Europe centuries later. Sadly, this vital contribution in the history of science was often ignored, partly due to the animosity fostered by the Crusades, and some Renaissance scholars are even accused of playing down and disguising their debt to the Middle East, sometimes for political and religious reasons, sometimes for personal glory. Welcome to All Things Arab, the home of everything related to the Arab world. For today's video, we have researched and listed the top 10 Arab scientists who made great contribution towards the advancement of science and technology. Before we begin, we would like to ask you to subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss updates for our future videos. Now let's dive in. Number 10. Abu al-Qasim al-Zahari, 936-1013. Abu al-Qasim al-Zahari, known in the West by his Latin name al-Bukhasis, was a medieval surgeon from Andalusian Spain. His extensive medical texts, which blended Middle Eastern and Greco-Roman surgical knowledge, formed the cornerstone of European surgical methodologies until the Renaissance. Abu al-Qasim was the core physician of the illustrious Andalusian Caliph Abd al-Rahman III and wrote his magnum opus, Al-Tasrif, translation, The Method in 30 parts under royal patronage. The text is known to contain the first ever description of hemophilia. It is also the first illustrated independent work on surgery, containing about 200 drawings of different surgical tools. After its Latin translation in 1200, Tasrif became the most authoritative text on surgery in Europe for the next five centuries. Its clear and lucid style ensured that it was even preferred over the works of the classic Greek physician Galen. Number 9. Nasir al-Din al-Tusi, 1201-1274 Al-Din al-Tusi authored The Treasury of Astronomy, a frighteningly accurate table of planetary movements that reformed the existing planetary model of Roman astronomer Ptolemy by describing a uniform circular motion of all planets in their orbits. This work led to the later discovery by one of his students that planets actually have an elliptical orbit. Altusi's monumental work, The Treasury of Astronomy, is credited with reforming the then prevalent Ptolemy planetary model of the Roman astronomer Ptolemy. This surprisingly accurate table of planetary movements was way ahead of its time in describing a uniform circular motion of planets in their orbits. This later led to one of his disciples to discover that planets actually move in elliptical orbits. Copernicus benefited greatly from the works from Altusi and his followers, but failed to acknowledge them. Altusi's detailed critiques of the erroneous Ptolemian system eventually led to the revolutionary discovery that the Earth orbited the Sun. He is also credited with editing authoritative Arabic versions of the works of Ptolemy, Euclid, and Archimedes, among others. Number 8. al baitar 1197-1248 Abu Muhammad Abdallah ibn Ahmed al baitar is one of the greatest scientists in the history of Muslim Spain and is widely regarded as the greatest pharmacist and botanist of the Middle Ages. Born in the Spanish city of Malaga, he learned botany from the renowned botanist Abu al-Abbas and accompanied him on his travels all across Spain in search for exotic plants and herbs. His journeys took him as far as Asia Minor. He was appointed the chief herbalist at the court of Al-Kamil, the governor of Egypt. Albatar's encyclopedic work, Khatib al Jami fi al Adwiya al Mufrada, is one of the greatest botanical compilations regarding medicinal plants in Arabic, which was held in great esteem by botanists up to the 16th century. His work on the therapeutical properties of various herbs influenced Eastern and Western botanists alike. Number 7. Ibn al Furnas, 810 887. Born in 9th century Andalus, Ibn al Furnas spent most of his life in the prosperous Emirate of Cordoba, one of the most prosperous cities of Umayyad, Spain, and its great learning hub. He became the very first person in history to fly a heavier-than-air machine a full 10 centuries before the first mechanized airplanes were invented. Historians claim that at the age of 65, Ibn Furnas jumped off a cliff 
from Yemen's Jabal al Arus Mountain and stayed in flight for at least 10 minutes, gliding in the air, even though he did not manage to land seamlessly, as he realized later that he had ignored some mechanical principles, which caused him to lose balance and do a crash landing. He lived for 12 more years and corrected his theoretical framework, concluding that the cooperation between tail and wings enabled a steady landing a principle replicated in ornithopter planes a thousand years later. Number 6. Al-Kindi, 801-873 Yaqub ibn Ishaq al-Kindi, known as the philosopher of the Arabs, is perhaps the foundational figure in the history of Islamic philosophy. Born to a noble Iraqi family, al-Kindi flourished in the rule of the Abbasid caliphs al-Mamun and al-Mutasim. While philosophy was the subject he was most interested in, delving deep into the works of the Aristotelian Neapolitanists of Alexandria, his work spanned various fields of science, such as astrology, Indian arithmetic, logoglyphs, medicine, and the manufacture of weapons. Along with his contemporary, Hunian Ibn Ishaq, he contributed greatly towards the translation of the crucial Greek philosophical and scientific works into Arabic. He wrote more than 270 books, many of which still exist, mostly in Latin translations. Number 5. Ibn al-Nafis, 1213-1288. Allah ad-Din Abdullah Abu Allah Ibn al-Nafis was an Egyptian physician who first explained the pulmonary circulation of the blood. He asserted that the parting between the left and the right cardiac ventricles is solid and not perforated. His claim clashed with Galen's view that blood passes directly from the right to the left side of the heart. Ibn al-Nafis correctly concluded that the blood must pass via the lungs to the left ventricle. The significance of this statement was not appreciated at the time, and most Western physicians remained ignorant of it. It was only in the 20th century that his works gained adequate attention. Ibn al-Nafis wrote various treaties on eye disease, the importance of a balanced diet, and wrote detailed commentaries on the writings of Avicenna and Hunayn ibn Ashik. Number 4. Thabit ibn Qura, 836-901. Thabit ibn Qara al-Harani, the Arab astronomer, physician, mathematician, and philosopher, was one of the most brilliant figures of the flourishing Arab Islamic culture of the 9th century. Thabit was first employed in Baghdad as a translator of Greek mathematical texts, translating works of Euclid, Archimedes, and Apollonius of Perga, among others. He also summarized the works of physicians, such as Galen and Hippocrates. He soon started writing original works on geometry, music, statics, astronomy, medicine, and philosophy. He later became court astronomer for Abbasid Caliph al-Mutadid. Many of his works were translated into Hebrew and Latin and greatly influenced scientific discourse in the Latin West. Number 3. Al-Jazari, 1136-1206 Ismail ibn al-Razaz al-Jazari, the son of a humble craftsman, was the court engineer for multiple Artikid kings and invented hundreds of ingenious mechanical trinkets which bedazzled them. For example, fountains that could be programmed to switch on and off, automatons in the shape of servants who would serve guests, and alarm clocks shaped like elephants. However, his major contribution was in the field of agriculture, to which he contributed several practical machines, such as water pumps and cleverly designed crankshafts and cranes. Known as the father of robotics, al Jazari is said to have influenced Leonardo da Vinci's designs. Number 2. Ibn al-Haytham, 965-1040 Ibn al-Haytham, Latinized as al-Hazan, was an Arab mathematician and astronomer who made numerous important contributions to the principle of optics and the development of the scientific method. In his book, Al-Khatib al-Manazir, translated as the Book of Optics, he presented the correct model of vision, stating that our eyes receive light reflected from objects and do not emanate light themselves. He used mathematics and logical reasoning to correctly state the phenomena of reflection and refraction. He discussed and improved various Euclidean theorems. His work directly influenced Western scientists such as Roger Bacon and Johannes Kepler. Number 1. Ibn Khaldun, 1332-1406 
Ibn Khaldun is considered to be the Arab world's greatest social scientist, historian, and developer of the world's first non-religious philosophies of history. The masterful preface to his Universal Theory of Arabs and Berbers is a documentary of immense importance in the philosophy of history. The preface, known as the Mukaddimah, or the introduction, has been described by the English historian Arnold Toynbee as a philosophy of history which is undoubtedly the greatest work of its kind that has ever yet been created by any mind, in any time, or any place. A career diplomat, judge, and polymath, Ibn Khaldun was hailed as a true genius and a uniquely original thinker when Europe was introduced to his works through a French translation in 1860. So, that was the video guys. We hope you liked it. Did we leave out any great names? Are there any more topics you would like us to make videos on? Let us know in the comments. Take care and goodbye. Thanks for watching the video. Comment down below which part you like the most or click the thumbs up button if you like the video.